Hi, welcome to Bilingual or Facial Pain and Oral Medicine channel. Today I'll cover peripheral sensitization and the reason why sometimes local anesthetic, not only local infiltration, but inferior alveolar nerve block fails to numb the tooth with irreversible palpitis. This was the lecture given to me by Dr. Glenn Clark, a professor and my mentor at University of Southern California, and the credit goes to him. When a peripheral nerve receives constant irritation, it'll start to extend more branches or dendrites, increasing the number of free nerve endings. This is called sprouting. It increases the area of receptive field and the area surrounding the damaged tissue will start to be sensitive. Secondly, upregulation of channels such as sodium channels and TRPV1 channels occur, lowering the threshold of the nerve. Stimulation required to cause the action potential is decreased and stimulation which did not cause pain will start to feel painful such as warm temperature or light touch. Sometimes demyelination of myelinated nerves will occur, exposing axon of the nerve. This will allow action potential to start at axon where it normally shouldn't, and this is called ectopic nerve activity. The word neuroplasticity is commonly used to describe the potential of nerve changing its property depending on the environment it is exposed and also their activities. Have you ever come across a patient who local anesthetic does not work, especially the patient with irreversible pulpitis? This phenomenon can be explained using the concept of peripheral sensitization. There are different types of sodium channels, and they can simply be divided into two categories, tetrodotoxin sensitive or TTXS, and tetrodotoxin resistant or TTXR. As we all know, local anesthetic such as lidocaine blocks sodium channel, preventing from action potential to occur at that point is blocked. Normally, TTXS are distributed throughout the peripheral nerves. But, when peripheral sensitization occur, TTXR sodium channels are upregulated, especially this channel called sodium channel voltage 1.8. These two figures compare the density of sodium channel voltage 1.8. Figure A is of a healthy pulpal tissue, and figure B is of a pulpal tissue with irreversible pulpitis. Notice the amount of areas with black stain on the right, representing sodium channel voltage 1.8. As you can see, sodium channel voltage 1.8 are upregulated up to about 8 more times compared to the healthy tissue. Now, what is it so bad of having more sodium channel voltage 1.8? The problem is that TTXR sodium channels, such as sodium channel voltage 1.8, have very low affinity to sodium channel blockers such as lidocaine. This graph represents the fact that it requires almost five times more concentration of lidocaine to block TTXR sodium channels compared to TTXS sodium channels. 10% versus about 80%. What these two numbers represent is the rate of inferior alveolar nerve block failure. And of course 10% is of the healthy pulp and 80% is of irreversible papitis. So almost all the time it should work for the healthy pulp but only about 20% it works for irreversible papitis. Many of you may have learned that the reason why local anesthetic does not work is because pH of the inflamed site is lowered, preventing lidocaine to enter neurons and block sodium channels. However, that does not explain the reason why inferior alveolar nerve block does not work. 
there shouldn't be any inflammation at mandibular foramen. Also, buffered lidocaine is still not proven to be more effective than conventional lidocaine. So, the reason why it is so hard to numb the tooth with irreversible pulpitis is because there is an upregulation of sodium channels which has low affinity with lidocaine. バイリンガル口腔顔面痛口腔内科チャンネルへようこそ今日は末梢感作について神経細胞が自由神経終末を伸ばしたり数を増やしたりします。これは質がスプラウリングと呼ばれる現象で、その神経細胞の重要やが広がります。つまり通常よりも広い範囲からの刺激をピックアップできるように変化します。また、ナト
非可逆性脂膵炎での失敗率はおよそ 80% と 20% ぐらいでしか直行しないという結果が出ています多くの方が炎症を起こしている部位に麻酔が直行しないのは局所の pH が低下しているからね pH が低下している組織ではリドカインが神経細胞に侵入してナトリウムチャンネルをブロックしづらいのだと習ったのではないでしょうかしかしこれではなぜ伝達麻酔を行っても麻酔が直行しないのかという説明はつきません吸湿部の脂膵炎を起こしていたとしても化学校付近まで炎症が波及しているわけではありませんよねさらに pH 調整されたリドカインというものもアメリカでは市販され始めていますがこれも普通のリドカインよりも麻酔効果に優れているというわけではないという実験結果が多く報告されていますなぜ非可逆性脂膵炎を起こしている患者では麻酔が効きづらいのかそれは末梢神経感作によりリドカインが効きづらいナトリウムチャンネルが増加しているからですバイリンガル口腔顔面痛口腔内科チャンネルをご視聴いただきありがとうございました最新のビデオのアップデート通知を受けるにはチャンネル登録をお願いいたします Thank you very much for listening to Bilingual or Facial Pain and Oral Medicine channel. If you are interested in getting more updates, please click subscribe.